Hello. Thank you for joining us today. The information within this webinar is presented by assessment consultants Rob Dyson and myself, Liz Gross. I really enjoyed collaborating on this webinar with Rob because I think we both have very different, but I think complementary perspectives on how to support struggling readers. As a school psychologist, I often find myself approaching things from very much of a clinical perspective. I am fascinated by the neuroscience of the brain and how all the pieces work together. Rob, on the other hand, while well, he does share these interests as well, comes from more of a curriculum perspective and very much wants to offer solutions that have a practical value because there is an inherent gap between what we find in research and what we can realistically apply in that complex ecosystem that is a school. And, you know, we very much discuss how do we bridge that gap? How do we find common ground? So I do think we have something unique to offer you here today and some great tools to support um, those students that are struggling. And we're very much excited to share that with you today. So as I hope you gathered from the title, the purpose of this webinar is to provide you with information to support your struggling readers. Our topic is very much in line with um, this research to practice sentiment. So the three main topics that we're going to present today are the science of reading. There has been some exciting developments in this area. Um, suggestions for how to support those struggling readers, particularly those that are struggling with the decoding aspects of reading. And then we're also going to provide an overview of the DRA3 online platform and word analysis components um, that translate research into practice. So by no means are we placing blame or making excuses as to why a child might be a struggling reader, but it is important to understand that our students do come to us um, with very different educational experiences in terms of reading and pre-reading skills. In fact, this slide is a big part of the reason that research cannot be directly translated into practical solutions because there are many factors that vary across students that can't fully be controlled for in the research setting. For example, it's important to recognize that some children are not exposed to as much oral language as other children before they begin school. Um, some students miss many days of instruction, you know, as we all know. Some students may have also changed schools. There's a mobility factor as well. Um, there's behavioral, attentional, mental health concerns that not only make it difficult to have sustained attention while reading, but can impact reading and learning, sorry, learning more globally. Finally, um, it is possible that a child has experienced stress or trauma, and this can impede their learning in the classroom um, and their ability to read for sustained periods of time. Um, the pandemic impact as well. Um, there's not a ton of hard research on this yet, but anecdotally, it seems like some students are um, being affected by this more than others. And it's likely, you know, um, uh, impacting these variables above to an even greater degree for some students. And the research will likely shed more light on this as time passes. So these are all things that create a gap between research and practice and also lead to gaps in student performance. And so how do we catch them up? Unfortunately, there aren't really any shortcuts to becoming a competent and confident reader. Um, there are a lot of things that need to happen concurrently for students to be able to read. Typical readers move through several stages um, that we're going to discuss in a little bit so that reading becomes this instant and effortless activity. Um, in fact, most skilled readers are not even consciously aware of the multitude of concurrent skills that are um, happening for them to gain meaning from text. text. Um, fortunately, research has been able to dissect the reading process into a hierarchy of skills. Um, and even better, the research supports that these skills can be taught, they can be modeled, and they can be practiced to support struggling readers and get them over whatever roadblock it is to produce proficient readers. So um, 
you know, enough with generalizations. Let's dive into the science of reading and refresh ourselves on what we know about reading. So here on this slide, I have the simple view of reading. The simple view of reading, even though it is simple, uh, really reflects a vast amount of reading research. It was first presented in 1986 and has been a helpful framework for understanding the research process or the reading process, pinpointing the component areas of difficulty and guiding instruction. The simple view of reading says that if you or I can quickly and effortlessly read words in a given passage, so if we can decode the words, and if we can understand what the passage um, means when it's read out loud to us, then it follows that we could understand the passage if we read it ourselves, we have reading comprehension. And while this may seem obvious, it actually runs counter to some of the um, literacy strategies that have been taught for decades um, in the U.S. So it's a little different than the three queuing systems approach and the whole word reading systems. Um, the simple view of reading represents, um, you know, very simply that reading comprehension is the product of decoding and linguistic comprehension uh, or, you know, oral language, vocabulary, and background knowledge to gain meaning from what a student is reading. There is newer research, though, as well, that is going to expand upon this, and we'll get to that in a second. But it's, um, you know, one of the big mediating variables in this re relationship with decoding and language comprehension um, and reading comprehension is uh, contextual reading fluency. So it's not enough that we can just decode words we need to be able to do that fluently. Um, we need to be able to do it instantly and effortlessly. Um, but, you know, dive beneath this simple view of reading and it certainly becomes a little bit more complex. So if you expand this model, as the research has done since the time that the simple view of reading was um, created, you can see that there are several subskills within each category. Um, I'll briefly mention the language comprehension portion over here to the right. It's comprised of oral language as well as background knowledge. And really there are some subskills on this side as well, but since today's focus is really going to be how to help students that struggle with the reading, specifically the decoding piece of it, um, we're going to really focus our time on the left side of the model. I only mention language comprehension because um, it is important and you definitely want to pay attention to the role of language comprehension when you're thinking about a student that's struggling with reading. So um, you can ask the questions, you know, in the classroom, how well does the student listen and understand directions? How well do they themselves tell a story verbally? Um, do they seem to understand the plot of a movie or story that's being read out loud to them? If you observe difficulties with this, it may be a global language delay rather than simply a reading difficulty. And it may be worth getting the speech language pathologist involved or providing some general language intervention. Um, but the focus for today is really going to be on the other side of the model, looking deeper at the decoding side of reading, which is comprised of two major pathways. First is word knowledge. This is the path that we use um, for irregular words, as well as words that have become sight words, so to speak. So in addition to knowing words by the whole, we also have a set of knowledge about subword pieces, and we are able to do structural analysis. So prefixes and word roots, we have a, a knowledge base about this that we can apply to decoding. Over here, this is really the most efficient pathway and what skilled readers rely heavily on. Cipher skills over here are most critical when we um, approach unknown words that we need to decode from scratch, so to speak. Within cipher skills, we rely on phonological awareness, 
understanding the sound structure of words, as well as phonic decoding. Each of these even has sub skills, and I'm actually going to read these out loud so that when we talk about some of the instructional tools later, you'll be able to see how well these tools map on to the research supported model. So we have rhyming, alliteration, syllabication, onset and rhyme, phonemic awareness, letter sounds, and blending. Furthermore, what recent developments in reading are finding out is that we not only need to have these skills, but we need to be able to employ them instantly and effortlessly. When we are able to utilize these instantly and effortlessly, only then can we engage <clears throat> in what is technically called orthographic mapping. This is the process that happens within the brain. Um, this is how skilled readers take new words that they decode and transform them into sight words. Um, it's really a very, very cool process. And when a word has been orthographically mapped, the reader is going to know three things about the word. They're going to know how it's spelled and what it looks like in print, the, the visual look of the word, the letters of the word. Um, they're going to be able to know how that word is pronounced, what it sounds like when it's read out loud. And the third thing they know about that word is what it means. So they'll have um, maybe a mental representation of the meaning of the word. So for example, the word dog. Um, you just heard how it's pronounced, so you recognize it um, when it's said out loud. You're probably able to spell it and recognize it in print. And of course, you know what that word means. When you hear dog or read dog, you have a mental representation of an animal with four legs that barks and is very lovable. Um, and so we have these maps in our brains for literally thousands of words, um, and we're able to rely on those maps as skilled readers as we read um, unconsciously, instantly, and effortlessly. And it takes those bottom skills down here to be able to do that process. And what's great is that we have learned that we can teach these skills um, to help students who aren't able to do that process, um, you know, unconsciously, we're able to make it a conscious process and practice it so that it becomes part of how they approach reading. Um, so if you want to learn more about orthographic mapping, I really do encourage you to read or watch some of the material summarized by David Kilpatrick. Um, but for the purpose of, of today, and since we're really focusing on struggling readers rather than already proficient readers, um, orthographic mapping is very much of a kind of end of the road process. Um, what we're gonna focus today are those component skills that you need for that process, because that really is where the rubber meets the road in terms of intervening with students that haven't mastered the process. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we really do need to um, identify which of these skills the student has and which ones they don't have, or um, to what degree do they have these? Because remember, we don't only want the student to have those skills, but they need to be proficient with the skills. So that sometimes involves a little bit of over-practicing and um, drilling and really getting a proficiency as well. So if you are needing a system that will help you assess these different skills um, and even better intervene with these different skills, I would really like to share with you all how the DRA word analysis component can provide you with a systematic approach for teaching or reteaching these skills and um, documenting growth over time. So as we, um, you know, we pick apart the word analysis component of DRA, I really want to make sure that I briefly describe what the DRA is for anybody that isn't aware. Um, DRA is all about authentic assessment. So it's an assessment system primarily um, that teachers are actually going to listen to students read out loud and have a conversation with students about the text. Um, DRA allows teachers to have this conversation within a standardized fashion. DRA is available for reading levels in grades kindergarten through eighth grade. 
Um, it's, uh, the DRA is a Spanish, um, kit, but we also have a span or sorry, it's an English kit. We have a Spanish companion kit, um, called the EDL two. So, um, and those two can work, um, hand in hand data is gathered through either paper, pencil, teacher observation forms, or through a digital platform that we'll be showing, um, later on. And the DRA was actually originally developed in 1986. Um, it had a recent edition though that was published in August of 2019. So if you're familiar with the DRA but haven't um, heard about some of the updates with the DRA-3, they can be summarized by this slide. Um, DRA-3 is very much about linking assessment to instruction and you're going to see this throughout the program. Word analysis is an excellent example of that because there are uh, we'll get into it, but there are 40 little mini assessments that you have access to. And for each little word analysis assessment, there's a corresponding lesson. So there's 40 lessons. It's a very robust type of a program. Um, and that link from assessment to intervention is apparent throughout, throughout the whole DRA system. Um, the level estimator is a great companion uh, tool for the benchmark assessment. Um, so DRA includes um, benchmark assessments for kindergarten through eighth grade. The level estimator is a quick little um, word reading tool that you can use to, if you don't have any prior information about a student's reading level, you can administer the level estimator. It will give you an idea of where to begin your benchmark assessment, which can save a lot of time for students that are either really high above grade level or far below grade level. Um, one of the biggest updates with the DRA-3 is the expanded benchmark book offering. So now we have fiction and nonfiction options at every level. There are over 100 benchmark books um, spanning kindergarten through eighth grade. So this um, having so many options really helps keep the assessment um, experience fresh and exciting for the students. Um, and just it's really meant to be a fun and engaging process and conversation that a teacher has with the student. The comprehension scoring has been updated to um, you know, facilitate ease and reliability when scoring. The online platform is brand new. It's phenomenal. It's just a great way to streamline the assessment process. Um, there's several reporting options, and of course, your data is archived in there, so you can access it easily. You can share it with different stakeholders, such as parents, easily. Um, it just really simplifies the whole DRA um, assessment to intervention process. And finally, we have more training and implementation supports than we've ever had before. So um, if you want to learn more about that, I definitely encourage you to talk to your assessment uh, consultant. Okay, so I mentioned that the DRA-3 has a lot of different components. Um, there's a benchmark component to help identify a student's instructional or independent reading level. Um, there's a progress monitoring component that allows you to do some brief passages and just little mini checks between benchmark periods to see how students might be responding to supplemental instruction. Um, the word analysis component we're going to talk about much more in depth, so I'll skip about I'll skip over that here. And then finally, the DRA continuum and focus for instruction um, really does a great job of linking your assessment results to um, different instructional strategies. And as you determine what specific instructional um, focuses you have for a specific student, um, you're able to. Um, very quickly see some trends within the classroom. Um, it helps determine small group makeup. So you can have um, you know, students that have to focus on one certain thing in a small group and then another group for a different focus for instruction. Uh, specifically, that online platform makes that process of grouping and regrouping students very simple and easy. Um, if you want to actually see what these components look like in the physical kit, 
Um, we do have a unboxing video uh, where I actually unbox the DRA3 kit and go through each of the materials. So if you want to see that, you can copy this link or just um, on YouTube search for DRA3 unboxing. Okay, so with word analysis, we have 40 very brief tasks that allow you to document your student's progress and skill level. Um, and what word analysis is going to provide is 40 corresponding mini lessons that can be used to teach or reteach those 40 foundational skills. The skills are um, kind of organized by five strands. And as I read these, I want you to think back to that science of reading slide and see if you hear any similarities. So we have phonological awareness, letter and word recognition, phonics, structural analysis and syllabication, and meta-language. Um, and within each of these five areas, of course, there are several sub-skills. And so let me skip here to a slide that can show some of those sub-skills. Here we go. Um, so as I mentioned, there are 40 tasks, right, and they are very, very specific, breaking down the different skills that are needed for the decoding process. And as you look at some of these titles, I think you're going to see some parallels between that science of reading model, um, that the expanded simple view of reading that we discussed earlier on. Um, here's the next 10. So you can see um, there's syllabication, there's um, onset and rhyme, um, lots of phonological awareness and phonemic awareness, phoneme manipulation, which is key. Uh, and these activities really are, so these are the tasks, right? And I mentioned each task has a corresponding mini lesson. So within these mini lessons, um, they're just really fun, kind of silly ways to play with words sometimes. And the students really enjoy them. It makes it a productive but also a fun um, intervention session and they can be done very very quickly and here's the last 10. So you can see blending and segmenting it really breaks it down into just many chunks that can be done quickly and very discreetly because that's as we we're talking about these are the skills that students um, you know proficient readers often pick these up kind of unconsciously. And so for students that are struggling, we need to make it a conscious process and provide that direct instruction. And so this really dissects that process, isolates that process, so that you can provide that um, specialized and direct instruction on these sub-skills. All right, so the word analysis component is going to enable teachers to support students in several ways. Um, it allows them to determine the student's level of control on the word analysis tasks. Um, each task has little mini check-ins where you can document pro progress over time so that you, um, you can see how the student is growing on these skills. Um, you can also compare word analysis results and group um, students according to their instructional needs. And especially if you uh, take advantage of that online platform, which by the way, you get, um, if you buy a kit, you get 30 free student licenses for that first year. So you'd have instant access to that. Um, that online is especially going to allow you to plan more efficiently and effectively for instruction. So with that, I am going to pass it over to Rob to show you what the word analysis component looks like in the platform. This is the homepage of the DRA3 online platform. At the top right, I can see my completion information as well as the number of students at benchmark and below benchmark. Here I have the fall and winter benchmark data for my students. Notice that the system will alert if progress monitoring is recommended. I can also use the word analysis with any of my students if I wish, but the teacher's guide provides a table that indicates which word analysis task I should begin assessing depending on the student's DRA level. As you see here, however, 
The online system will recommend the task level where I should begin assessing, so I do not have to refer to the table in the teacher's guide. For the task that I have already started collecting data, I can see if the student is demonstrating no control, some control, gaining control, or demonstrating control in using the foundational reading skill, as well as the date where I last assessed. Also notice that the arrow symbol will give me a quick glimpse of the student's progress with these skills without having to drill down into the data. The student is making progress with rhyming in task one, but the student is not progressing with initial sounds in task two. Let's go ahead and go into a task and see how we assess with word analysis. Here I'm provided with the description of what is needed to administer task one. I can either get the student assessment book out of my kit or I can access the PDF in the platform. This is very helpful if I'm wanting to use word analysis remotely. The instructions that I will read to my student are in blue. So the student is viewing the pictures in task one while I'm reading the instructions. The first item I will model. In each row, there are two pictured words that rhyme. I will ask you to point to a picture that rhymes with the first picture in each row. I will show you what to do. Glue, tree, cat, two. I'll point to glue and say glue ends with oo. Tree ends with e. Glue, tree do not rhyme. Cat ends with at. Glue, cat do not rhyme. Two ends with oo. Glue, two rhyme. We will then do the next item together. The rest of the items, I will say the names of each picture, and the student will also say the names of each object and then point to the one that rhymes. I will score the student's responses. I can choose to either record my observations live in the platform, or I can score with paper and enter the results later. After the task is scored, the results will be displayed. I can also go back to the home page, select the student to see all of the data that's been collected. Here, we see the student action plan. I can see the benchmark data as well as the indicator showing if the student met the proficiency level for that benchmark. Below the student's focus for instruction, where I provide individualized supports to the student. Notice that the DRA3 online platform also indicates some lessons that I can access from the word analysis. I will come back to that in a moment. If I come to the top and select student assessment history, I can see the student's benchmark data and progress monitoring data that's been collected. And here's the word analysis data that we collected earlier. What is nice is if I'm working with a student or having a parent meeting, I can quickly access the student's responses from that assessment. What the word analysis provides you is a systematic means of tracking these essential early literacy skills to support your students' reading development and to provide you with more support. So let's go back into the student's action plan and take a look at the word analysis mini lessons. The system will recommend the certain tasks to start with based on the student's reading level. This student was recommended to start with task one, which we completed earlier. I'm going to go ahead and go into the mini lesson for task two. Here I can see that all of the mini lessons follow the same structure of teach, reteach, scaffolding for some extra support, and then reinforce. Teachers can use these mini lessons with all of their students by going to the digital library and then word analysis and then choosing the word analysis mini lessons. From here you can see the word analysis task for each of the strands. Strand 1, strand 2, strand 3, and for each of these strands you can go ahead and go into the task and you'll notice that they all follow the same type of, of structure that you saw earlier. Now, while I'm here in the online support, I do want to point out the resources to help the teachers implementing the DRA3. There's a getting started where you can take a look at the training videos. We have videos to show you how to prepare for the DRA benchmark as well as administering the DRA. There are also some basic steps for teachers helping them navigate through the platform, 
And then for a particular part of either the DRA or reporting, there are some more detailed resources. For example, if I'm giving a benchmark, I can look at the benchmark assessment overview. And this is going to give me information on how to give the DRA benchmark to my students. Well, Liz, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back over to you. Thank you very much. So how do we make this work within your school system? And of course, this is going to depend on the resources and personnel available within your school. Word analysis is designed in such a way that it is flexibly added into a wide variety of systems. In some schools, word analysis could easily be implemented as a push-in or pull-out program with a reading specialist or intervention who knows the child well that could administer the word analysis components. In other classrooms where the teacher is very comfortable using maybe a reading center's model or spends you know, much of his or her time moving around um, the classroom to observe and conference with students, then it's also possible to integrate word analysis into that model as well. In fact, for some teachers that are very familiar with the word analysis component, classroom teachers, um, they find that they can integrate these activities throughout the day rather than making it a dedicated word analysis time. They can supplement that um, just normal lessons, maybe even outside of um, reading instruction like science or social studies, anytime a student uh, encounters unknown words and helping students generalize these word analysis skills um, throughout their day. So in summary, word analysis is a resource for you to use and um, how you choose to use the word analysis is based on your needs. So do you need more? Say that you have a student that breezes through the word analysis uh, and they really overcome some of those hurdles and they've um, done a great job building those cipher skills and their decoding skills. Um, what if you need now to move on to supporting contextual reading skills like passage reading skills, reading comprehension? The DRA3 kit provides assessment and instructional resources for these skills as well. We just didn't go over through them as thoroughly today. So the DRA3 um, can build fluency, comprehension, vocabulary through its progress monitoring assessments and follow-up instructional recommendations. There are instructional reading routine cards that can support um, a wide variety of skill development in the areas of comprehension and vocabulary and word attack skills as well. Um, there are graphic organizers that really walk through different comprehension skills. Um, so there really is a lot to offer um, struggling readers within the DRA3 beyond the um, decoding aspect that the word analysis addresses so thoroughly. What about the flip side? Um, what if you have a student that does not breeze through the word analysis component? What if they seem to be stuck and you feel like you need more for these students as well? As well. So at that point, I may recommend some additional assessments and looking at some of the other data that you probably already have available to you. For example, how does the student fare on any other benchmark assessments you may have within your system, such as Ames Web Plus or, or several others um, out there? Um, do you suspect that there may be uh, learning disabilities such as dyslexia? Um, if so, it may be appropriate to do, uh, and, and rather than diving into a full evaluation, it may be important uh, or appropriate to do a targeted screener with um, one of our clinically validated dyslexia screeners, such as the Shaywitz dyslexia screen or the dyslexia indexes of the KTA3 or Wyatt4. Um, these are targeted screeners that can be done in 10 to 20 minutes, um, depending on the student's age level. They have excellent psychometric properties for discriminating those that may be at risk for dyslexia from those that are not likely at risk for dyslexia. Um, so these can be a great way to um, do a targeted screening that doesn't take much time before jumping into a more fuller evaluation. So if you want more information about the DRA3, please visit us online. 
Um, this segment here is actually the last of a four part webinar series for DRA3. So if you are interested in any of the other sessions, um, these focused on the benchmark assessments or the progress monitoring components, uh, one of the earlier ones here, strategies and tools to help improve reading skills for tier two and tier three population. Um, if you want to check out any of these other recorded webinars, I encourage you to visit the product page at pearsonassessments.com slash DRA3. Um, and then if you are ready to um, possibly place an order or have additional questions, we do encourage you to um, go through one of these three avenues. Um, we really do thank you for your interest and your commitment to supporting struggling readers. I hope you saw something presented today that you feel could help your important work that you do with students. So again, thank you and have a great rest of your day.